Hey everybody, it's Steve Alexander here at the award-winning Rotowire Fantasy Basketball Podcast. It's Tuesday, April 9th. I'm Dr. A. He's Kieran Specker. I'm going to the Hawks game tonight, supposedly. God willing, in the creek don't rise. Um, and we got fantasy championships, injury news, and an incredibly busy Tuesday night to talk about when we come back. If there it is. <laughs> Kieran, we did it. We made it through to the final week of the NBA regular season. We did it. And now <laughs> we just got to make it through one last week of crazy long injury reports. Well, I, I my leagues are all done. They all wrapped up. I got the big, the big dub in uh, 30 deep, which I'm super psyched about. And uh, did you get any, did you get any wins? I didn't get any wins. Um, I'm battling for a third place. Uh, that It's a four-week-long championship-type uh, deal. So the last week of that, probably not going to get third place. And then um, I secured, like, we have a stake league. So there's 16 teams, and then the bottom eight have to pay for the top eight for a stake dinner. So I'm in the eaters in that section. So I, I saved myself couple hundred dollars uh, with that so that that was a big win for me even though i didn't take home any money i get a free steak that definitely counts anytime you get a free steak uh from playing fantasy sports it counts as a win um so so we had the national championship game last night i'm a, from indiana all my purdue people were at the game i was feeling purdue i was kind of uh thought Zach, Zach AD was going to kind of run over them. He did, but nobody else could do anything. UConn had the perfect game plan. Turned out to be kind of a ho-hum, boring game. Um, but how weird was it to not have to worry about one single NBA thing yesterday? Like, that was that was wild. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Um, I, and especially, like, th there's so many teams that are playing back-to-backs. The Grizzlies played a back-to-back -back last week, and then their next game is, a back, like, a back-to-back -back this week, and then there's no games on Monday. It seems like odd scheduling. Um, you know, th there was a free slate of NBA so that we could all tune in to the college championship, and I tuned in for about five minutes in the second half, and I was like, all right, well, this is over. So yeah. um, I the, the only real, like, thing – that I noticed from that game was Purdue only had one player that had an assist. That seems crazy to me. Like you got, if you're playing UConn must have had some sort of defensive scheme and obviously Klingon is a beast down low, but that only one player and assist in the champ. He had eight assists of course, but like that's still crazy to me for a championship level game. Yeah. They, they game planned really well for Purdue. So, uh, all right. Let, let's hit some some injury highlights real quick. Some news from yesterday. Um, Trey Young of the Hawks has been cleared for contact after his finger surgery. So um, it looks like we're going to see Trey at some point this week. Will that be tonight? I doubt it, but it, I mean anything is possible at this point. Um, Giannis is iffy for Tuesday against the Celtics. Um, Carl Anthony Towns scrimmaged on Sunday. He's going to play at some point this week for the Wolves. And Anthony Davis, after getting his eye raked over again uh, on Sunday, sounds like he's going to play tonight um, despite the discomfort. Yep, absolutely. I think uh, Trey Young and Cat have both been ruled out for tonight. Um Barring, you know, we saw Joel Embiid be ruled out for all, all the way up until tip off, and then he got cleared for his big return. So, barring a situation like that, Trey and Cat will both be out tonight. But I do expect them to play at some point later this week. Um, the Hawks, you know, they're kind of just chilling in that playing spot, uh, playing pretty decently. They've lost back to back games, but, you know, 
DeJounte Murray's like kept them alive. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how much Trey Young plays when he does return and how big of an impact he'll have. Uh, the cat news is fantastic for the Timberwolves and Timberwolves fans. Nas Reed has been playing really well in his in Cat's absence, but Cat brings just another level to that team, another offensive threat, another defensive threat. He's not great on the perimeter, but still, like that team is better with Cat, and they're going to be a force in the playoffs with him healthy. Uh, Giannis and AD should be fine. Um, we are a little bit concerned about Kawhi Leonard, though, right? He's missing another game tonight. Uh, we haven't really had a substantive like update on like how he's feeling. That'll be five straight absences, and for a guy like Kawhi, five straight after a health healthy season up to this point ahead of the playoffs is a little concerning. Uh, yeah, it is um, highly concerning on Kawhi Leonard. I mean, we're talking what five games in a row, and a knee and. Man, he, he he was such a good soldier this year. And I, I I was, like, coming back around, like, man, maybe I'll draft Kawhi Leonard again next year. And, uh, and now I'm kind of feeling like, man, if I, if I would have gone through that whole 30-deep season and he was my anchor and then he checks out for the last five games, man, I, I'd be crushed right now. I, I would be um, devastated. So I... I don't know, man. And then a couple other things we didn't have written down that we talked about. Uh, Jakob Pertle out for the year for the Raptors. Scotty Barnes done for the season for the Raptors. Um, but yeah, this Kawhi thing, man. That's I, I don't like it. I don't like anything about it. No, it, it was nice to see Paul George turn back to his Indiana Paul George days uh, the other day. But the Clippers without Kawhi are not going to be a force in the West. They're not, and and Phoenix is r- struggling again. Like, yeah. man, I don't know. The West is the West is weird, uh, but everything's kind of locked into shape now, right? Like, um, let's take a quick look at the standings. I have not done that recently. I know Boston, Boston has like a fifteen game lead on Milwaukee, right? Like that. That's insane. But the rest of the East is – the Bucks have just fallen apart and kind of let a couple of teams have a chance here at the two seed. Uh, between The two seed and the seven seed are separated by three and a half games. That seems crazy. Uh, the two seed and the eight seed are separated by four games. <clears throat> so there could be a lot of shuffling here over the last week. The um, freaking Orlando Magic are one game behind the Bucks. Like, here that- they come. Is nuts. <clears throat> the the mismatches that Franz and Paolo provide the magic are just awesome. I like trying to game plan against Paolo for the playoffs. It's going to be tough. I think he has he needs to take a couple steps still. But like the way that he's dominating games, like it's LeBron esque. I don't want to say he's LeBron yet, but the, his post up game, his facilitating this year he's taking all of the next steps to be a, a superstar in a couple of years and you know they're about to be a two seed they make some hay now it could be he could be turning that corner in the next during this playoffs for sure and then you know the knicks got og back they're they're gonna be fine you know julius got ruled out for the season but og and mitchell robinson are back so the knicks defense is gonna be tough the Cavs with donovan mitchell i'm still not sold that mitchell is 100 and if he's not 100 percent I don't know how I feel. Um, and then the Sixers with Embiid and the Heat are at the bottom of the standings, and those are two super dangerous teams. If I was the Bucks and I'm reeling and I just lost to the Wizards and now I got to play the first-round matchup is against the Sixers or the Heat, that's really tough. That's really tough for the for the Bucks. Did you know the Bucks? The Bucks have four games left, and the Magic have four games left, and they play each other in two of those games. Like Orlando is at Milwaukee on Wednesday. Orlando finishes at home against Milwaukee on Sunday. So if they win both of those games, if Orlando happens to win both of those games, it's probably done. They're probably going to pass them. Like, this is incredible. I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is, uh, the Orlando match. But the bad news is, I know we're going to get to this in a second, but they, they lost Franz. He got hurt on Sunday, sprained his ankle, and now he's kind of iffy for the whole week. 
Um, and they're going to need Franz Wagner to play if they're going to beat the Bucks two times. But that's pretty exciting, man. I love I love when these head to head matchups that have playoff indications imp- implications actually end up happening, and uh, you know it just makes it makes the pre playoff run so much more fun so yeah with the 82 game season it doesn't always work out like that like but but in the nfl you feel like always week 16 week 17 you're seeing these huge playoff implication matchups so it's good to see in the nba with that make that last week interesting then you still have in the west you still have minnesota denver and oklahoma city all kind of battling for who's number one you've got the mavericks who have gone nine and one over the last 10 red Red hot, red hot. Just on fire. Kyrie and there's pictures on Twitter of Kyrie and Luca, like best buddies, brothers. And, uh, you know, Dallas made a nice little run. They passed the Pelicans. They won their division. Um, they are the number, they're going to be the number five seed in the West. All that might be enough to get Luca an MVP. I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt that they're going to give it to anybody but Jokic. But, um, I don't know. I, I think Luca and the Mavericks finishing fifth at least puts him in the conversation. And Luca shot like 79% from the free throw line this year. If he would have done that back in the day when Matt Straub and I were betting a jersey every single year, um, I would have a closet full of jerseys. Yeah, it's, gr- it's great to see him get better at the free throw line, you know, especially for fantasy purposes. Um, he's a great shooter. By all, like, he can knock it down from deep, so I don't really know what what goes on when he gets to the free throw line, and he gets there often enough that if he go, increases from 69% to 79%, that's a lot more points per game for sure. Yeah, um, and he did it. He did it. And you, you said if the Mavericks are the fifth seed, they theoretically could pass the Clippers. They're, they're two games back, but like we said, Kawhi is out, so who knows if the, how many games the Clippers are going to win in this next series. Long shot, but they – there's a possibility for them to jump to the four seed. That's true. Uh, all right. So let's just preview this crazy 14 game slate. I think all 28 out of 30 teams are playing tonight. I think it's 14 games. Um, yep. Detroit's at Philly. Chimizi Me Too, who I picked up for my 30 team final week, if I had to play this week, but I don't, thankfully. But uh, Me Too was going to be in my starting lineup this week if we had to play it out. So he is starting for Detroit. Um, meanwhile, Tyrese Maxey, Kyle Lowry, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid are all literally game time calls for the Sixers. And Kelly Oubre does not have a big red cross by his name. He should be a strong play tonight, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, looking at FanDuel and DraftKings, uh, neither of those sites have – player props for any players other than Embiid and Cade Cunningham. And both of those guys are questionable for today. So I would stay away from placing any single bets down. Obviously, we, like we said, most fantasy seasons are already over. So if you're looking for action, um, you can go to those sites or prize picks or something. But uh, it's kind of surprising that those are the only two available. Um, there are a ton of question marks for Philly. Uh, five guys questionable, Maxi, Lowry, Harris, Embiid, and Melton. I would expect a couple of them to play, um, but I'm, I'm staying away on any uh, player props for that game. The over under is 15 and a half, or uh, the over under the spread for Philly is 15 and a half. The over under is at 223. This is one of one, two, three, four, five, five games six games that have a double digit spread tonight. So that just kind of shows you where the league is at right now. Uh, there's going to be a lot of blowouts um, tonight. I think there are, there's a couple games on the slate that are going to be entertaining for, uh, for a viewership um, as opposed to like, you know, having fa- uh, fantasy implications or betting on it. Um, this is one of those games. Detroit is a mess. Philly is kind of trying to figure it out, but they're not going to risk anything now with Embiid coming back. Um, I, I'm i probably rolling with Philly to cover this. Um, Detroit, that 15 and a half points is a lot of points, but if, it, if it, half of their starters are playing, I, I like Philly to cover against Detroit tonight. Um, Cade Cunningham has been one of my 
he was I was really high on him coming into this fantasy season. I drafted him in m- multiple leagues. I think I had him in half of my leagues. I was a little disappointed at times um with like his shot selection and watching those games and just being like the Pistons are terrible and like I like Cunningham's style and he gets stats, but the way that he gets stats it, it's kind of like you know fluff stats in blowout games. Um, I'm really hoping that he he becomes a guy in the next couple of years, but I, I don't think – and it, it was great to see him, like, play a full season after being injured all year, but I, I, I wanted more from Cade this season. It was nice to see, like, Jaden Ivey step up, but, you know, there it's going to be, like you said, Metu is coming through. Like, there's a bunch of, like, no-name guys that are, are making hay for Detroit this week. Yeah. Um, I I don't – can't make my mind up about Cade Cunningham. I, 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 I tend to try to ignore the hype and the the people that the naysayers that are like, oh, his game doesn't really translate to fantasy that well, um, and think that he's going to be awesome. But then, like you just said, you watch him play, and it's like, okay, well, it's his game is kind of detrimental. The fantasy like it doesn't match up that well but he's also real young and has a lot of time to figure it out and still puts up big numbers so i'm, I'm cool with kate i'm not i'm not reaching kate is not a guy i will ever reach for i yeah i i, I reach for him a lot this this year uh and like a lot of assists a lot of points a lot of threes at times good free throw shooter not many defensive stats, poor field goal percentage. Uh, so obviously he a lot better in a points league than a category league. Yeah. Okay. So on to Indy and Toronto. Indy is healthy. TJ McConnell has been very good. I think um, if I build a fan to a lineup tonight, it's going to probably have Chimizi Me Too in it. It's going to have TJ McConnell in it. Um, Kelly Olenek should be good for Toronto again. Emmanuel Quickly is out. Uh, meaning Grady Dick and Gary Trent are both probably um, going to play and, and put up numbers tonight. Uh, Trent's good to go. Dick Dick has got some sort of injury problem. He's questionable, but uh, anything stand out with Indy and Toronto for you, Karen? Yeah, so Rotowire has been trying to promote uh, this prize picks tool that we've been using. So what it does is it takes the numbers on prize picks and then it compares it to what sports books are offering, what rotowire projections are offering, how often that prop would hit. Um, and normally, just a bunch of cool analytic tools to look at. Check it out, rotowire.com slash picks. Um, so for this game, I was looking at that tool, and it had Kelly Olenek on prize picks. His number is at 13.5 points, right? And then you go to FanDuel or DraftKings, that number goes up to 14 and a half. So if you want to play prize picks tonight, Kelly Olenek, more than 13.5 points. He scored at least 13 in six of his last eight, and he's averaging 15 points during that set. Like like you said, Quigley's out. There's going to be more shots available. Um, I like Kelly Olenek's uh, points total today, 13 and a half. Um, it's, this is another double-digit spread game. Uh, Indy has still trying to kind of like figure it out they they look good at times tj mcconnell has been playing really well um but i i don't really like any anything else in this game um i like trent to get up a bunch of shots barrett has been rj barrett has been playing really well since coming back from his personal absence he looks really uh comfortable in toronto um i'm not quite sure that I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is with RJ Barrett. I'm much more comfortable rolling with Olenek. I feel like he's a safer option tonight. Uh, well said. Uh, my Dallas Mavericks against your Charlotte Hornets. Oh my goodness. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough to watch. Um, Dallas is pretty healthy uh, right now on the, on the uh, health watch. Like, Derek Lively's out. Gafford and Grant Williams are both uh, ready to go. They should be good. Luca and Kyrie should be good to go. Uh, maybe just for a half. Maybe just for a quarter. Whatever it takes to to win this game, it's not going to take long. I'd see Luca having one of those twenty-five and five, four three-pointer first quarters tonight. Um, and then. Uh, 
Danilo, is it, no, I can't remember the guy's first name, but Michik, uh, the point guard for Vasily, for the Horn Hornets, uh, should be playing tonight and should be ready to go. So um, I, I like Michik and I like Grant Williams in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Grant Williams, uh, Nick Richards came back for the last game against OKC, but since OKC obviously has Chet at center. They rolled with Grant Williams again in the starting lineup. I think Williams just gives Charlotte a little more offensive firepower, and they desperately need it. Um, so I, I like rolling with Williams, but I'm taking Micic, uh today on prize picks. Like I said, I'm, I, I used the tool again. His uh, points, rebounds, and assists total is set at 21 and a half. Um, that is the same on FanDuel and DraftKings, but if you go on those sites, you get it at minus 125. So there's a lot better value of on this number on prize picks. Mitric has surpassed 21.5 points, rebounds, and assists in five of his last six, and he's averaging 12 and a half points, 10 assists, and 2.7 rebounds during that stretch. I think there's a lot of really good value there. Um and I, I, this is another one, another surprise, surprise, another double digit spread today. And like you said, I wouldn't be surprised if Dallas blows them out in the first half, but I'm not really concerned about Charlotte pulling guys like Mitrich or Grant Williams in this game. Um, this is also a little bit of a rent revenge game for Grant Williams. Obviously Williams started the season with Dallas and there was a lot of chatter online, a lot of rumors about how he rubbed people the wrong way there. Um, so there might be a little bit of a revenge game going on for grant williams against dallas tonight yeah and i think that's that's definitely valid because the way he went out in dallas was not cool and yeah and he's playing well and he's probably gonna want to he's probably gonna want to wrap something up a little bit so i think that's legit um the miami hawks are, are the miami heat are at the atlanta hawks i am going to that game with my sometimes road world Fancy basketball podcast, Bob Nastanovich of the band Pavement. We are rolling down there together, taking my daughter to the Hawks game. She's bugging me to go for a couple of years. So we're, we're, we're doing it. We're going in. Uh, Terry Rozier is iffy with a neck injury. Bam is probable. Uh, the Hawks will not have Trey Young as we established uh, the rest of their lineup. Um, looks like it should be should be good to go. Uh, what what you got here, Gary? Um, so yeah, like you said, Trey Young's not playing. Um, this is actually only a four point spread. Miami's only favored by four. So this should be a, a good game. Um, I think you, you, you said Terry Rozier had the neck I issue, uh, on Sunday, he was not listed. He was good to go. And then he was a late addition to the injury report with some neck stiffness, which was never a good sign. I was fully expecting him not to play. And then he got cleared to play, and I was like, oh, well, maybe it's not that bad. And then he put out the biggest dud of, of all duds, scored four points, played only like 20 minutes, and then after the game said I probably shouldn't be playing. Um, that kind of leads me to believe that he won't be playing tonight, which sucks uh, for the Heat. Um, but they got Hero back, so I think you know the backcourt of uh, Hero and Robinson will be fine and mitigate Rozier's loss. Um for the prize picks tool, the, the theme of today's show, I'm rolling with Jalen Johnson on prize picks. His points total is set at 16 and a half points. FanDuel and DraftKings have that at 17 and a half points. So you get an extra point on the prize picks tool. Um, he had a dud last week again in Dallas, um, scored in single digits. But his other two starts since returning from injury, he scored 28 points and 17 points. I know Miami has a good defensive front court and all that, but Jalen Johnson is a stud. He's from Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin, so I'm rolling with the hometown boy, Jalen Johnson, uh, against the Heat tonight. It's more than 16 and a half points. It's um, nice to see that the Hawks lineup looks normal. It's, it doesn't have Creechy and uh, a bunch of no names in it uh, like it easily could at this time of year. They They are... They've got a play in tournament. They got to go win. They've they got to win some games. They're getting ready to welcome Trey back. Uh, I'm sure that part of them thinks, hey, you know what? If we get hot at the right time, you never know what can happen. And it's been such a dismal season for them. And um, Coach Quinn is not really fit in the way everybody hoped he would. And um, I think them making a run in this in this play in tournament and maybe getting into the playoffs and and getting some more 
postseason experience would actually uh, be good for that team. So we'll see what happens. Um, next on the docket is the Celtics and the Bucks. Is that correct? Yeah, it looks like that. Um, Porzingis <laughs> probably going to get the night off. Uh, that's the thing, man. These Celtics, I, I don't know how people are like, well, I still don't think they're going to win the East. I mean, they just run over the East. They can do whatever they want. They can hold Horford out. They can hold Porzingis out. They can sit Tatum. They can sit whoever they want because it doesn't matter. Uh, everybody's going to be healthy coming into the, the postseason there. Uh, the Bucks. it sounds like Chris Middleton is probable. Giannis, a little iffy for tonight. Um, and I, I don't know that Milwaukee can afford to not play Giannis. But yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Um, yeah, I th- I feel like Giannis is gonna play tonight. Um, with the Bucks' recent struggles, uh, this really feels like a a game where a team that has probably been like we're only thinking about the playoffs, right? You fired Budenholzer, be- the he had won a bunch of regular season games, right? Like that is that is what he does. He wins regular season games. His team struggle in the playoffs. You fire Budenholzer because you want to have better success in the playoffs. And now you're all upset that you aren't playing as well during the regular season. And it's like, well, wasn't the whole point of the offseason to prepare yourself for the postseason and get these guys? Obviously, there's no better way to prepare for the postseason than winning in the regular season. Um, But I do feel like you look at teams like the Lakers last year and these veteran teams, the Warriors a couple years ago when they made the run to the finals against the Celtics, like, there are these veteran teams with these superstars can, can turn it on. I know that, that that phrase is kind of like looked at in a negative light, but in the NBA, these superstar teams can turn it on. Um, the Bucks need to turn it on. And I feel like this is the moment where Giannis is like, I'm playing tonight. Dame has a good game. The Celtics may be resting Przingis and Horford. So, that, you know, they got a little bit of a light front court that the Bucks can take advantage of. I kind of like rolling with Bucks money line tonight. There, it's kind of a, a wild card play, just a shot in the dark. But they need a turnaround. Um, and what better way to get like to psych yourself up to be like, all right, we're back after a couple bad losses than beating the number one team in the league. Um, I think this this uh, Celtics are only favored by two and a half tonight. I think that takes into account that the assumption that Porzingis and Horford are both going to be out. And if both those guys are are out, I really like the Bucks front court to dominate Luke Cornett and Xavier Tillman and O'Shea Brissett and type guys like that. Um, and obviously that Giannis is also questionable, but even if he doesn't play Bobby Portis and Brooke Lopez are much better than the backups for the, the backup front court players for the Celtics. So I'm, I'm kind of, this is kind of like my, uh, my play of the day. I'm rolling with Bucks money line, which is plus plus one ten right now. Um, I, I don't really like any of the, the prize picks plays here. I was kind of looking at a Przingis points total. His points total is set at 16 and a half. But like I said, he's questionable, not expecting him to play. And I, I don't want to put down a bet on on somebody that's questionable. Uh, okay. I like that. The, uh, the play of the day, the Milwaukee Bucks against the Boston Celtics. That's... <laughs> That's gutsy, and uh, I like I like the fact that Vegas has got the spread down low. That that works. It works out. We've seen uh, Boston lose games they shouldn't lose, so it's not it's not crazy. Uh, the Knicks are at the Bulls. The Knicks are healthy. Jalen Brunson just keeps rolling along, mowing people down. What if Brunson was still playing with Luca? I'd like to know how that would be going right now. Uh, for the Bulls, you've got Kobe White as probable. You've got Io DeSumo as iffy. And you've got, um, oh, shoot, Caruso uh, also iffy with an ankle injury. Um, so the whole backcourt for Chicago is kind of banged up. Are you, does that make you want to roll with Kobe White tonight? Or do you not trust him? Oh, no, I, I, I probably rolling with Kobe. I, I know that he's had some struggles since that that long injury absence. Um, but and the Knicks defensive backcourt is really solid. Um, I like Kobe in this game. Um, 
going going back, I'm from Wisconsin, but I'm actually not a Bucks fan, so there's no there's no bias in that Bucks pick. Um, but I did I did have a couple buddies texting me like, if Giannis can dis- can beat the Knicks, does uh, does he get back in the MVP conversation? And then Brunson drops forty on their head, and it's like, well, does Brunson deserve to be in the MVP conversation now? Because if he only played the Bucks and played against Damian Lillard every game. Brunson should be the MVP. He's averaging like 38 points a game against the Bucks this year. Um, so that that Jalen Brunson, fantastic player. Uh, I, I don't think he'll get any MVP votes, but he uh, more than has exceeded expectations this year. And um, I, I feel like forever we're going to talk about what would have happened if he would have stayed with Dallas. Um, but I, I don't think you would have seen this type of ascension. I think he he learned he learned those pivot moves. He got all of that stuff going um, with the but by, by playing with Luca and all of that stuff. And then he really had to be on his own to to flourish. Um, and then now there's you know the talking heads on ESPN are always talking about oh let's go get superstars for New York. Let's go get you know let's go get Donovan Mitchell. Let's go get Mikael Bridges probably isn't a superstar type player, but I think he would actually be a good fit. But this team really, for me, is is Brunson, Robinson, and that like defensive front court, Devin Chinzo, OG Ananobi. Like I think they went out and they 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 did the moves. They got o, OG. Um, so I think they the Knicks don't need to get a superstar for tonight. Um, I think. You know, I'm just rolling with the Knicks to cover. They're only favored by four and a half points. Um, pretty healthy squad tonight. Uh, like you said, there's a couple injuries to monitor for the Bulls. Um, I think the Knicks are just a much better team. Um, I think that number is too low. So I'm rolling with Knicks minus four and a half against the Bulls tonight. Man, if OG and Julius Randle wouldn't have gotten hurt, I think the Knicks would be really fun to to watch in these playoffs. So it's, it's I'm pretty sad that they're not. Not going to be a full strength. Um, Orlando Magic at Houston Rockets. Houston finally gave up the fight. They did not catch the um, Golden State Warriors. I think we were all hoping they would. Um, Franz Wagner injures ankle on Sunday. He's hurt. Are, are we is, are we going to get a Joe Ingles sighting tonight if he's out? And uh, Houston actually is still rolling along. Everybody looks healthy. I expect Jalen Green and, and the guys to go off again. Yeah, I was on the pod yesterday with uh, Nick Whalen. Um, Alex Brutha was off, and we were he he was kind of questioning like, are is Houston going to rest some of these guys to, in the stretch run? And we kind of came to the conclusion that they're built backwards, right? Um, you know, normally you have your veteran starters, and then you got some young guys willing to to contribute off the bench. But this, their starting lineup is a bunch of youngsters, uh, aside from uh, Fred Van Vliet. And then their bench is a bunch of <laughs> veterans. So I don't really see Jalen Green or Eamon Thompson or Cam Whitmore or Jabari Smith or any of those guys while uh, taking a seat. So I expect the Rockets to play pretty well um, over the final stretch and continue um, to build off of whatever they've built in the last couple weeks. Um, a fantastic stretch for a young team that they can look back at in the offseason and be like, if we play like that for a full 82, we can be a playoff team for sure. Um, so that's exciting. I think they're going to want to continue that over the final week. With that said, even if Franz doesn't play tonight, um, I, I'm rolling with the hot hand. Orlando's only a three-point favorite right now. And we're talking about a three-point favorite. I know they're playing on the road, but they're, they're fighting. They're the almost the number two seed. They're the number three seed in the East against the 11th seed in the West. And they're only three point favorites. I don't think that's enough points. Um, Even if Franz doesn't play, I know I'm not psyched about a lot of Joe Ingle minutes, but I know they can also go to Maritz Wagner, his Franz's brother off the bench. They can go to Jonathan Isaac. I really like uh, the way that Jamal Mosley manipulates uh, those bench minutes um, when, when guys are out. So I, I think Franz will be fine for the for the playoffs. Um, I do think he might miss a couple games over the final week. And even if he misses tonight, I still like Orlando minus three against Houston. Yeah, and if, if Franz is out tonight, uh, Bancaro is going to be locked into all my FanDuel lineups hard because he's going to have to do all the heavy lifting himself. So. Definitely. Um, okay. Uh, Washington... 
Minnesota. We have got Kyle Kuzma, iffy with an ankle. Uh, Jordan Poole, Kispert, and Denny Abdija kind of all balling out right now. Like, I think Jordan Poole finally cleared his mind and is just playing basketball again and finally looks good. Kispert scoring points. Abdija's, Abdija's had a great year, in my opinion, man. Like, I, I, maybe not a great year. He's not like an all star. Not a fantasy all-star, but he's just a solid fantasy player. Uh, relatively low in the rankings. But, you know, anytime I get a 31 and 12 out of a guy like that, I'm just psyched about it. Uh, Minnesota starters are all healthy, including Nas Reed. Uh, we're still waiting for the return of Cat. What you got going on with Washington, Minnesota? Yeah, I, I think you, Avido, I think he's a star in his role, right? Like, uh, you look at the overall season stats and you're like, well, this isn't a star player by any means, but he has been a star on certain nights and he ca is certainly capable and he's taken a huge leap this forward. I'm, I'm really encouraged to see that. Uh, obviously, you're, you're talking about Denny, right? Denny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously, it's for, uh, a team that's not really <laughs> playing well. So we'll see how that translates to like actually winning games, but super encouraged by that. Um, I, th I hope pool plays in the league for a long time. He's, he's an entertaining player and character. Um, obviously for him to do that, he needs to be productive. And I think he can be uh, that said, this is another double digit spread. Minnesota is favored by 16 and a half points. Um, Washington has five guys that are questionable kind of staying away from a lot of bets on this game. Um, I do like uh, Rudy Gobert's points total on prize picks. I know that kind of sounds like a weird phrase. Rudy is not known for scoring, right? Um, his points total on prize picks is set at 14 and a half. All of the sports books have it at 14 and a half, but the odds are at minus 125. So you get a lot better odds on prize picks. Um, Gobert has actually scored in double figures in seven of his last eight games. Um, so like he's he's getting buckets. Uh, there, there's opportunities for dumps offs from Ant and Mike Conley and whatever. Uh, but the biggest reason why I'm doing this is because Washington has no centers. <laughs> uh, Marvin Bagley's already been ruled out. Uh, Tristan Vucevic, who's been playing pretty well, is questionable. Rishon Holmes is also questionable. Kyle Kuzma, who plays some small ball five at times for them, is also questionable. Mm -hmm. Um, so even if these guys do suit up, they're a little banged up. Um, and even if they were at full strength, I don't, they're have, they're not really good matchups against Rudy Gobert. So it, it's a little bit of an odd one, but I'm rolling with, uh, Rudy's points total 14 and a half tonight against, uh, Washington, no center wizards, no center wizards. Yeah. They don't have Danny Gafford there anymore. Do they, they don't have anybody. Rashawn Holmes almost tried to cost me 30 deep, but I didn't let him do it. Sacramento at Oklahoma City, Keegan Murray, iffy with a calf injury. Jalen Williams, iffy with an ankle injury. He's missed four straight games. Uh, I feel like Jalen is is going to roll out there tonight and play. And uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander should be good to go as well. I feel like we're about to get the Oklahoma City Thunder back at full strength. Yeah, absolutely. I sure hope so. Um, and this would be a fantastic time to do so because this is a a playoff matchup right here. This could be a first round playoff matchup. Uh, kind of getting a, an early preview. There's so many uh big double digit spreads tonight, and this is actually going to be one of those competitive games that I, I'm I'm going to be tuning into for sure. Um. While SGA is fully cleared, he's not on the injury report at all. He's making his return um, following a, a multiple game absence. I think he's missed he missed four straight and six of the last seven. Uh, the one time he did play, he did play 35 minutes during that stretch, but he scored only 19 points. And given that, um, I don't think he's really going to be limited today. Like, I don't think he's going to play 25 minutes or 27 minutes. I think he will get a full allotment of minutes, um, but I don't know if he's going to be as aggressive. Right now, Price Picks has SGA's points total set at 28 and a half. Seems like a pretty high number for a guy that has played only one game in the last two weeks. Um, so I'm going to be rolling with the under on that, less than 28.5 points. Um, Sportsbooks have SGA's total at 28 and a half, but the odds again are minus 125. So you get better odds on Price Picks. Um, 
that and that said, like I don't think I'm not expecting him to be super rusty or anything. I just don't think that he's gonna be super aggressive. De'Aaron Fox is a, a great defender. Um, SGA Fox, Sabonis, Chet, like hopefully Jalen Williams plays. This is this is probably right behind Bucks um Celtics for like must watch games tonight, right? Like th- those are the two games that I'm definitely tuning into. Probably throwing in the Warriors and Lakers, but we'll get to that in a little bit for sure. Yeah, and Deer and Fox was another cog, another key cog on my my thirty deep team. Deer and Fox, Kobe White, shout out to them. Austin Reeves, Victor Wembanyama, of course. And so yeah, I, I'm probably I like Fox uh, to try to go off against the Thunder tonight, so I could I could see him being in my FanDuel lineup as well. Um, Kieran, I think we're here to the annual silly season special. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs are taking on the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. If you look at the lineup sheets for this game and you look at Memphis, uh, you will see like 12 guys with red crosses next to their name. And then you will see five names of people you've hardly ever heard of uh, that are in their starting lineup. And it's pretty funny. Um just going over some of these names, Trey Jones, Malachi Branham, Julian Champagne, Sandro Mamukelashvili, uh, Victor Wembanyama, Scotty Pippen Jr., Go- Jordan Goodwin, Gigi Jackson, Malcina Pereira, and Trey Jameson. Like, that is your starting 10 tonight, and it's just, it is fabulous. You, to look at the Memphis injury report you gotta have the eclipse glasses on you gotta yeah. have something you gotta have something to protect yourself uh it, it is a mess uh I, I i have no other an- analysis aside from that um you know the only reason why you're tuning into this game is to get one more look at victor Wembanyama before the the regular season is finished um they're expecting it to be a pretty competitive game spurs are only favored by four and a half points the over under is set at two fifteen and a half, which is tied for the lowest on the board. Um, I'm I'm probably staying away from this one. If I if I catch any of it, I'm probably just cheering for Victor to make a couple threes or have a, a fun block or something. But like you said, this is silly season in full effect. Um, happy to see some of the these guys get an opportunity. Um, you know, Victor versus G, Victor versus Gigi Jackson should probably have some highlight worthy plays today but not much going on in this one for sure dude if they let if they let victor women yama go out there and just play in this game like this could be one of those historic nights because he's going to be by far the best player on that court and you know i i from my personal standpoint i'm glad i don't need to worry about whether Wimby's going to play or not because it was incredible to see that that team i had him on and all the teams i had him on like if he played I won. If he t- took one game off a week, I usually lost. Um, so he, it was crucial for him to be in there. But, man, he could go out there and just light a fire tonight. It could be awesome. Well, I, I, one of the biggest things with Victor for me throughout the early stages of the season when he wasn't really quite putting up the points or, like, the the consistent production that we were hoping for was he wasn't playing a full, like, 30 minutes. He was playing 28 minutes, 29 minutes. Um, that has gone out the window, and I'm really happy to see it. Like, obviously, the Spurs aren't playing for anything, but Wembenyama has played 30 plus minutes in 17 straight games, and like you on Sunday for the your championship, probably he played 43 minutes against the Sixers. And when a guy like that is playing 40 plus minutes, the stats are just gonna come. Like, even if he has a bad shooting night or something, he's gonna get s- stats just because of the way he is and the dominance that he has Uh, 33 points, 18 rebounds, six assists, seven blocks in 43 minutes. If he plays anywhere close to 40 minutes tonight, like you said, historic performance could be a coming for sure. Yeah. I think that was a double, a double overtime game as well, which I was not complaining about as long as it kept him on the court and uh, my free throw percentage didn't drop Uh, (laughs) tonight. We've got Denver. Uh, at Utah, all five Denver starters are actually on the injury report, but all of them are probable except for Aaron Gordon, who's questionable. Utah's silly season starting five will include Keontae George, Colin Sexton, who should go off, 
some dude named Bryce Sensabaugh, Taylor Hendricks, and Omer Yurt Seven. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm pretty high on Keontae George as as a as a guy for next year, uh, as a guy for keeper leagues. Um, I I think he has a bright Damn. future. Um, for sure, Bryce Sensabaugh and Taylor Hendricks, another two more rookies that uh, are carving out playing time, but I I'm, I'm kind of hesitant on them projecting them for next year just because you know obviously you're gonna have marketing back and collins probably you know like there'll, there'll be other options in the front court um keontae george is a really great player for next year fantasy and for keeper leagues as for tonight this is a another double digit spread denver's favored by 15 um their money line is minus 1450 so there's there's not much money to be made on denver tonight um so i'm probably not rolling with any of that they have been resting a lot of their uh their regulars jamal murray just came back from an absence gordon has missed a couple games Jokic missed a game a, while, a couple weeks ago but he's been playing he's been a regular on the injury report um i think this is kind of just like a get right game for denver um blow out a, a silly season team uh, not not much going on. Um, I do like um, Nikola Jokic like to to dominate. Like you said, uh, Collins and Walker Kessler, John Collins and Walker Kessler are both out tonight. That means your seven is starting at center. Um, I don't expect him to be locking down Jokic for much longer. The only thing that could stop Jokic from reaching his totals tonight is just a blowout, and he doesn't play in the fourth quarter, which is certainly possible. A uh, couple more games here, and then we're going to get ready to roll out of here. We've got the Golden State Warriors against the Lakers. you got Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins is probable. Um, Trace Jackson Davis uh, starting for the Warriors, playing pretty well. I like him in FanDuel. LeBron and AD are both iffy. LeBron missed the last one with an illness. AD left with an eye. Uh, but I think they're both going to play. And... Uh, these teams don't really like each other. I, I, I think they want to go out and try to bang each other up here before the playoffs get going. And uh, it should be a, should be a fun one. This is a game I could actually sit and watch tonight, I think. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely a, a top three game on the slate. Uh, like you said, they, these teams don't really like each other. Steph and, uh, and LeBron are always kind of cordial uh, in the media and whatever and talking about their legacies and, and obviously, there's the Draymond Green. He 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 adores LeBron based on all of the things that he says. Um, but I, I think these two teams, when they play each other, they want to be at their best. Trace Jackson Davis has been playing really well as a starter. Um, I, I I'm expecting him to remain in the starting lineup just because of the Anthony Davis in the front court. Uh, but Jonathan Kaminga is back and healthy, and he is he might like he came off the bench last game, so it wouldn't be surprising if he did that again, even though he was a regular starter for a long time. Um, this is a, a fantastic game. Like I said, you know, you got the Kings and the Thunder, and then you got the Bucks and the Celtics. This is right there up there on the slate for must watch TV. Um, I'm probably the Lakers are two and a half point favorites, they've been on fire to, um recently. They, the Warriors have trouble containing LeBron, so I think I'm going to be rolling with Lakers minus two and a half against the Warriors tonight. Uh, the, I, I I do like the Warriors. I just I feel like Clay has to have a big game in order for them to to be able to combat the Lakers' physicalness in the front court with LeBron and Rui Hachimura for that matter and AD. Well, anytime you have to rely on. Uh... Clay, I, I don't think it's a good thing. But Re Hachimara, man, one thing I learned this year is if AD or LeBron's not playing, Re is going to be the man. Uh, the Clippers are visiting the Phoenix Suns. Kawhi Leonard is out for the fifth straight game. James Harden, Paul George, Terrence Mann will all play and should do well. Uh, they all played well on Sunday. Uh, Suns injury report is pretty clean except use of Nurkic, Nurk alert questionable with a sprained right ankle <clears throat> yeah if Kawhi was playing this would be a must watch game um without Kawhi, i i don't have much faith in the clippers um pj tark pj tucker in a starting lineup for a wannabe championship contending team in the year 2024 is not ideal um 
So I, I, I like the Suns to cover tonight. Uh, they, they lost last night. They had they had been kind of picking up steam and then kind of hit the brakes again. It's kind of been the story of their entire season. They're horrible in the fourth quarter. Um, that's the biggest concern for the Suns going into the playoffs. Uh, but barring another PJ, PJ, PG-13, Paul George explosion, um, I don't think the Clippers can keep pace with the Suns when the Suns are at full strength with Booker and Beal and Allen and KD dropping in three. So I like Phoenix to cover here. The line is uh, Phoenix is favored by seven and a half points. Um, if Kawhi was playing, this is a totally different story, but I just don't think the Clippers have enough firepower. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of I'm with you on that. I think um... – yeah, I, I I don't know that I love a lot of FanDuel stuff in that in that game. Uh, maybe some Grayson Allen, but he's so expensive now um, that he's tough. Uh, anyway, uh, last game of the night. It is a doozy. The New Orleans Pelicans, healthy except for Brandon Ingram, um, against the Blazers' silly season lineup that includes Scoot Henderson. Ryan Rupert, Chris Murray, Jabari Walker, and somehow the man I feel is being punished all season for being who he is, DeAndre Ayton. Look, dude, I know you want to go to Cancun. We know you want out of here. We know you don't care. But guess what? You're playing 30 minutes again tonight. Suck it up and go. <laughs> Dominating. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean – DeAndre's playing really well. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, it, that starting lineup is is brutal. Um, Scoot Henderson has has not lived up to my expectations. I think there's still hope that he can turn a corner. Um, he's just he, for fantasy purposes, he's kind of a, a a wash in category leagues. He can put up stats in in points leagues. Um, the 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 main piece for Portland is is the bench guy Delano Banton. He's been just fantastic. He's pro- him and DeAndre Aiden are, are are the only guys I like in Portland. I'm a really big Pelican stand. I, I'm sure anybody who tunes in um, has noticed that. I think I, I know that they've been struggling without Brandon Ingram. Zion's been playing fantastic ball. I think he's playing the best ball of his career right now. Um, that's dangerous. CJ McCollum is nice. Herbert Jones is a fantastic defender. Trey Murphy's a good shooter. Like they got all these pieces. Um, I'm really hoping that they can put it together. Uh, I I gotta stick with my guns here. I'm rolling with the Pelicans to cover minus 13 against the port uh, against the Trailblazers. Um, there's there's not much analysis to go into this other than the Pelicans need to win. They need to keep winning and they need to blow out teams like Portland. Uh, they can't pull the Bucks. <laughs> they can't they can't fall apart like this. Um. I, I think Pelicans play pretty tough tonight, and I, I think Zion just absolutely goes crazy. Um, so the, the Pelicans minus thirteen, and and I'm all over on the Zion's, over on every Zion's uh, prop bet that is out there. Wow, that's a lot of faith in a guy with a hurt finger and a and an appetite for destruction. Uh, <laughs> I almost let you let me get out of here without giving Danilo Banton some last second praise, but man, that guy carrying teams for the last two months, just balling silly season, Superman, silly season here. I love, I love Banton so much. I love the fact that, um, you know, I love that. I love when I pick a guy up that nobody else is really talking about. And then, you know, a co-host on a podcast or something like, "Eh, you know, I'm not really feeling that guy and and then that guy just goes off for the next two months and it's like let's let's go and do this so uh love me some denial about him. Uh, absolutely all right man well um i think we i think we did it again uh we made it through a podcast my voice is still here and i think now kieran I, my my vision is for you and i to do this every tuesday through the playoffs are you good Stop. with that yeah, sounds good to me. Before we get out of here, I do want to answer Matt Carmody's question. Oh, uh, yeah. he, he said, how many of the final four games do you think Middleton will play for the Bucs? Um, I think, so looking back, Middleton has played in 
nine of 11, and the only two times he sat out was the second night of a back-to-back set. Uh, the Bucks play tonight, and then they also play tomorrow. I'm um, expecting Chris to play tonight, expecting him to sit tomorrow, but then I would assume he'll play the final two games. Um, the Bucks are, fight, like we've mentioned, they're fighting for the number two seed, uh, so they can't really rest him uh, over those last two games. And like we said, one of those games is against the Magic, so they're definitely going to need him to be to be available for that game as they fend off the the fierce competition for the two seed. Um, so I would say conservatively, he'll he'll probably play at least two, probably will play three of the four. And I am uh, I'm more bold on him playing three than you are, and I think he might even play four. It depends on what their locker room is like. Um, if their locker room is talking about getting tracked down um and, and getting tracked down by the magic and getting passed and they're like we can't let this happen and middleton you're healthy you've, you you've only played so and so many games over the last two seasons get out there and you know carry us home down the stretch so i wouldn't even be surprised if, if he played in that back-to-back i'm not going to go as far as predi- predicting that he will i just think it, it's possible that he could yeah, and like the game tomorrow is against the Magic, so that would be the big one. And uh, so I, I, I feel like there's a chance he plays four, but I, I, like you said, I don't want to project that he'll play four for sure. All right, well, Kieran and I will be here every Tuesday at eleven throughout the NBA playoffs to talk uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, underdog, prize picks, whatever. And then Cam and I'll be back here on Thursday doing our victory laps on our, our championships. Um, and then we'll go from there. But uh, I'll see you all again Thursday at 11. And Kieran, thank you so much for coming on and uh, looking forward to keep doing this. Yeah, sounds good, Steve. Looking forward to it. Have a good time at the game tonight. Thanks, man. See you guys. Have a good one.